Hi internet people, welcome to Handyman Kevin. The bandsaw is one of the handiest tools you can have in a shop. You can cut metal, wood, plastic. It's just a great all-around tool. But you do need to set it up right if you want to get the most out of it. Now, my friend gave me this bandsaw a little while ago. It's missing some parts, but today I'm going to show you how to set it up and make it work for you. Now the first thing I had to do was build a stand for it. A lot of these old tools don't come with stands because they expected you to make your own. So, made a nice sturdy stand out of 2x4s. And then I want to show you this motor mount. You can see I have the motor. It sort of pivots on this, which is a piece of a bicycle frame. And I left enough space on the sides that I can get it out in less than a minute. And that's important because I only have one motor and I swap it around to different tools. Now, I put a cone pulley on the motor to give me some different speeds, but for the bandsaw we're only going to use the two smallest cones. Um, the smallest one's for metal, and then the next biggest one is for wood and plastic. And you can see that it just tensions itself here, because it just sort of swings on that pivot. Open up your saw and you can identify the main parts. Most models are pretty similar. All of them have a driven wheel which transfers power from the motor to the blade. Then there's at least one idler wheel which controls the blade. Both wheels should have rubber or urethane tires so they don't get chewed up by the blade. And the idler wheel is mounted on an assembly that can adjust the tracking and the tension. On my saw you adjust the tension with the screw on top. Some saws use a knob or a lever and then the tracking is adjusted with a screw on the wheel but other saws would use a knob on the other side. As the blade runs, upper and lower guide blocks keep it from flexing too much. There's also a little roller that rides on the back of the blade. The blade guard protects your fingers and should always be down as close to the work as you can get it. And of course the table supports the work and it accepts different miter gauges and fences. Now when I open it up, I notice the tire on the bottom is in a reasonable shape, but the tire on the top is missing. So that tire is um, basically to protect the wheel from the blade, because wheels are a lot more expensive than blades. So I went ahead and ordered one from Sears. They're really good about parts for these old machines. They have pretty much every part for this bandsaw. Now if you're on the cheap, I know people who use bicycle rim strip, cloth tape, friction tape, whatever, just something that um, will protect the wheel and will go on fairly smooth. will be fine. But I have an actual rubber tire. You can see, here's the tire. It's basically just a big rubber band that goes on the wheel. First thing I'm going to do is there's some old glue on there. And I'm just going to scrape that off. Be careful not to chew my wheel too much. So I had some spray adhesive left over from when I showed you how to build countertops. And I just put glue on the bottom of this. Doesn't need much because it's going to want to stay on there. Just enough to keep it from slipping. And then you wrestle it on there. So I had some spray adhesive left from when I showed you how to build countertops. So I glued the inside. And now these can be a real wrestling match to get on. So like I said, they're a giant rubber band. And if it's too hard, you can use bicycle tire tools.
put it on just like a bicycle tire. Looks okay. You don't want it to be bunched up anywhere. Now at this point, before we go further, you want to grab a straight edge and just make sure the top is still pretty flat. And this is really pretty good. Uh, but it's, it's American made from the 50s and they actually took machining seriously. A lot of imports, not very flat and they need to be. So if your table's out of whack, you can either scrape and lap it by hand if it's not too bad or you can take the whole thing to a machine shop and have them flatten it out for you. Now, while we're working on that top, it's just got some, some surface rust and some, looks like wood glue. So, got some WD-40. I'm just going to spray it down with WD-40. And then I've got a scrubby scotch bright thing. And I'm just going to clean it up. So, now's the exciting part. We get to put the blade on. Bring the blade guard down part way. Right there. Now, picked up a blade from the hardware store. This is a quarter inch, which is for is it? Yep, 12 inch band saws, like this one. Now, a quarter inch is probably your all around most handy blade for woodworking. Um, and then you, you use it as like a 3 8 with a fine teeth for metalworking, and those are the only blades you'll ever need. Uh, unless you're doing, you know, serious fancy scroll work or resawing. But we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Open that up. Now, they kind of spring out of the package sometimes. Oh, that's pretty good. Oh, there we go. Blade. I want the teeth to be facing down. Now the um, blade tensioner on this is on the bottom. So we just release that. Start it off in the slot. Get it between the guides. Just now I couldn't get the blade on because this whole assembly was frozen. This piece, which is the back of the pulley arbor, is supposed to move up and down on these rods, but it's stuck so it wasn't releasing tension. So I'm going to blast that out with WD-40 and then very carefully work it up and down with a screwdriver. And uh, once it's, it's nice and loose again, I'll grease it and I'll put my bandsaw back together. Okay, now you see I've got that piece relatively loose. A little stuck there. And once I crease it up, it will work pretty well. Okay, so when I tried to put the blade on a second ago, I couldn't get it because the tensioner was frozen. So I had to take all this apart and loosen it up and grease it. And uh, I think it works pretty good now. You see it's moving freely. So, Gonna go ahead and put the plate on. Now you want to make sure the teeth are cutting down towards the table. So just slip it down the throat. And hook it on both wheels. And then this one, the, the tensioner is right here. Just 
tighten that up. And then you want it to have a little bit of slack. Don't get it too tight or it's going to break. That looks okay. But uh, you can adjust it with a screwdriver from the top. So now it's on there. I'm just going to rotate it by hand and see how it's tracking. You want it to run in the middle of the wheel. And that looks okay. Although, it's not in the guides. So I'm going to track it back a little bit. So and that's, on this one, the tracking is actually a screw in the middle of the pulley. Other ones have a knob. So that was too far. And you're just trying to try as close to center as you can while it still hits the guards or guides. going to set up the plate guides. I'll zoom in in a second so you can see what's going on. But um, basically you have a rolly thing on the back. That should be right up almost touching the blade but not quite. And then um, you're going to have blocks that come in from the sides. Those also sh should be um, just kissing the blade and then backed off maybe a thousandth of an inch. Okay, here's a close-up of the blade guides. You can see that when the blade moves, it doesn't quite touch. Now, it's, it's really hard to see, but you want these guides to um, cover the flat part of the blade, but not the tooth part, because they'll get chewed up. And it's just hairs width, and then this, you, you run in until it just spins with the blade, then you back it off. And the same thing on the lower guides. Well, the moment of truth has arrived. Got everything put back together. So let's turn it on and see if she explodes. good. There's only a couple more steps. One thing that everyone pretty much agrees you should do is you should hone the back of the blade. It uh, makes it turn much more smoothly. So I've got just a, an ordinary oil stone, Arkansas style, any, any kind of work. Just going to oil it up. And you just, what it is, they stamp these blades out of steel and um, oftentimes that back like trailing edge will be rough and if you do this the blade lasts longer and it also turns better and runs cooler.
there is to that. Now one thing which I'm not going to show you in this segment because we're running out of time is I do want to replace the switch. This is just kind of a little inline light switch that I'm using to, to test this. But um, these, these safety switches are uh, really cheap. This one costs less than $5. It's got a key so you can lock your machine out when you're working on it so no one will come up and hurt themselves. And then it's got the paddle style switch. So if you, know, if you get your arm caught in the machinery or whatever, all you gotta do is hit that with any part of your body and it'll shut off. So I'm gonna wire that in, but I'm not gonna bother showing you right now. So I have a working bandsaw now. Uh, pretty exciting, and expect to see some bandsaw projects in the future. See you later.